bringing the people behind our food to life. In plant breeding and animal breeding, it's all the same. If a trait exists to begin with, but the environment does not continue to select for that trait, that trait will disappear. So, <clears throat> if you grow carrots, to get back to plants again, if you grow carrots and you just put the seed in the ground and you grow the carrot and you let it grow until it makes seed, but you don't look at the roots, you don't dig them up and look at the roots, in about three generations you're going to have carrots that are all forked and the roots won't be like what you started with. And it's not because you selected against good roots, it's just that selection is an ongoing process and it never ever stops. There is no end point in actual plant selection or animal selection. We grow old maintaining these things and then we pass them on. That's how it's worked. But if you try to do something called random selection, where you just grow 200 of these individuals, and then with your eyes closed, you pick out 50, and you let those 50 make seeds, you are not maintaining that variety. And yet, there are actually scientists who think that that's how you maintain varieties of poultry. They actually do this. Governments do this process. And all they're doing is, is um, helping those varieties slowly disappear. So in our crop plants, we have typically, uh, in open pollinated plants, in carrots, let us say, all commercial carrots are now hybrids. And the open pollinated types that we had back in the 1950s, which were probably terrific at that time, those have been allowed to wander without selection. Until now, they're just a shadow of what they formerly were. And organic growers see this as our resource, or all these old varieties that have been let go. They all require work to get them back to what they were. But the traits are, are there, but they've been diluted by a lack of selection. As an example, in the Pacific Northwest here, we grow lots of beets. And uh, beets can be made into hybrids. And so most of the beets that, that are sold from the Pacific Northwest are hybrid beets. However, in various places in the world, there are, for instance, in Pakistan, they still use, uh, they buy a lot of an open pollinated beet that is sold by the very same company that now produces hybrids here. Well, there's this market for that open pollinated beet, and they're not gonna leave that money sitting on the table. They continue to grow those beets. But I know a plant breeder who worked for this company who is a, a beet breeder, and he said that he was himself told specifically that he should not spend any time looking at open pollinated beet varieties. Nobody cared about them. They wanted those varieties to go bad. And they were going to keep selling them to the Pakistanis until the Pakistanis one day realized that they needed to get on board with buying hybrid seed. And one way you convince them to do that is just let the open pollinated one gradually, gradually, gradually run down and become worthless. And then one day your customer will wake up and say, wow, look at those hybrids. Those look great. Why are we still using these OPs? These look ugly. Well, they look ugly because nobody put any effort into them. So in organic plant breeding, we're trying to use our opportunity of being owners and managers of organic property, organic farms, organic systems with organic soils, that's a great resource that we have that the industry doesn't even have. And most of us think that if the conventional seed industry were suddenly to realize that there was an opportunity to be had in organic plant breeding, they wouldn't actually have what they need to do it. They don't have organic ground and true organic systems with truly managed organic soils to work with. 
Organic farmers have that. Organic Seed Alliance realizes this. That we actually have the resource, which are the organic farmer who knows the system of intended use, who truly understands what organic fertilization and crop management is. And if those people can be just shown the tricks of selection, which are not that deep, then organic farmers could suddenly have really terrific seed at our disposal. And we see no reason to believe that industry is ever going to bring that seed to us. There's not a single sign that industry uh, intends to bring organic farmers organically bred seed. They might bring us organically grown seed so that they can sell it to us and we can use it. That just means it was grown on an organic farm, but it was not bred in an organic system. And it's probably not exactly the seed we need.